Adam and Jesus. We read Romans 5, verse 12 to 21. A few years ago, Pik Bota had a conversation with Stephen Hawking on TV, the Einstein of modern times. Pik's question to him was, what happens to your consciousness when you die? This brilliant physicist who knows everything about cosmology answered Pick. A person is the same as a computer, and I certainly don't believe in heaven for computers. If you pull it plug, it's dead. Eternal life is just a fairy tale for people who are afraid of the dark. Our shocked and terribly surprised Stephen Hawking will be one day, and with him there will be a multitude of others who heard the message of the gospel clearly and distinctly, but laughed at the absurdity of it. One man once said to me, You claim that God is omnipresent. That is totally impossible. How can I believe in a God described as impossible? Indeed, God is completely too great and indescribable for our small minds to comprehend, even too great for the incredibly intelligent Stephen Hawking. Because creation is totally incomprehensible, his claim was that the universe just accidentally came into existence during the Big Bang. Nonsense. The creation, God's creation, was the greatest miracle we could ever dream about. But there was a second great miracle, one that stands out like a dizzy mountain peak in the history of the universe. I'm talking about the wonder of God's great act of reconciliation on Golgotha. We can rightly regard it as the second creation because on this day, God created a quittal for all mankind. One of the most important elements of the first creation was man, Adam. He was to become the father of many nations and certainly one of the most important key figures in human history. There is, however, a very great similarity but also very prominent differences between the results of this first creation, man, and those of Jesus during the second creation. Adam causes punishment for mankind. Jesus brings about salvation. Adam commits sin. Jesus brings about grace. Adam is the cause of death. Jesus gives eternal life. Adam causes condemnation. Jesus buys acquittal for mankind at a huge price. Adam causes enmity between God and man. Jesus brings about reconciliation. Adam falls into disobedience and drags his descendants along. Jesus leads mankind to obedience. Indeed, Adam was a very important person in history, but Christ's representation achieved so much more for you and uh, than Adam's. Paul goes to great lengths to emphasize this fact. Just think, what things would uh, dominate your life if Jesus had not represented you on the cross? There's certainly still remnants of Adam's legislation uh, uh, in your life, but through Christ, they no longer rule over you. Often it feels to me as if Adam's actions still reign over my life. Someone once wrote to me about 
how she had said ugly things that made her Jan Branchel run away in shock. Yes, such things do happen. She wrote that later she admitted to them that she was wrong. When Christ is in your life, the much richer and stronger consequences of these actions so dominate your life that you can even admit and confess your mistakes. Your certainty does not lie in the current state of your life. If that were the case, we would all be lost. Your certainty, however, lies in what Jesus achieved for you through his great act of reconciliation. Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein both had very special insights into the workings of the universe and the history of the cosmos. They understood the wonder of God's creation like few people ever have. Hawking could, however, never recognize the God of the creation in it. But Einstein did give credit to a pantheistic God. They were the masterminds behind astounding theories. But the true God, and especially the truth of God's acquittal through Jesus Christ, was totally incomprehensible to both of them. Possibly, it was just too simple for them. Paul was also a highly educated man, and I think we can place him academically on the same level as Einstein and Hawking today. One very big difference, however, is that Paul recognized what those learned men totally missed. He saw that God leads a person to faith and certainty through the richness of his grace, and that there is an inexhaustible source of grace and love from which we can live with certainty every day. With God's grace, you too can place your life in his hands and have peace today. Let's pray. Lord, I praise and glorify you for the great grace that you have shown to me. Amen.